Like that TV show with Jake Paul. Dog times. <laughs> Happy holidays. Let's get in here. I want to be a little transparent with all of you. I want to talk about gear investments this year. And also I want to talk about the brutality of what 2023 did to me as a freelancer here in Los Angeles. I got hit bad this year. This is probably one of the worst years as a freelancer that I've ever experienced as an s -Corp, as an LLC. And a lot of it is because we had the writer strike and then we had the actor strike and then we had the dual strike, both the strikes going on. And then as some of you know, in October, my garage got broken into and I had about $12,000 worth of lighting equipment stolen out from under me. So that it was just a brutal, brutal, year. As you'll see here, 2023 total days on set, I had 15 days as a director of photography, I had 12 days as a gaffer, and I had one day as a first AC slash camera op. That is brutally low. Uh, that's less than half of what I normally do. A good year for me is 60 days. And I had some guys in my Patreon be like, dude, that's not a lot of days. However, you got to consider I have the YouTube revenue as well and all of the streams of outside passive revenue that come from having a YouTube channel, right? So, so, so obviously, you know, freelance isn't the only thing I do. Uh, we all, we're all well aware here, okay? Anybody with a YouTube channel that has more than a thousand subs, we all know everybody is monetizing off of YouTube. And I always tell my Patreon members, a YouTube is like a spider web, right? Everybody thinks it's just solely ad revenue. No, no, the ad revenue, which is paid by Google AdSense, by the way, because Google owns YouTube, okay? The ad revenue is literally just the hub of the passive of revenue. After that, it's just a spider web, right? There's tons of affiliate links, sponsorships, whatever the case is, Patreon. There's, it's just, it's like, brrr, it just grows, right? So obviously the bigger the channel you have, like Gerald and Dunn or Caleb Pike, yeah, there's no wonder those guys are full-time YouTubers, right? But here's the reality of it. I never set out to be a full-time YouTuber. I have no desire to be a full-time YouTuber. I'm still not trying to be a full-time YouTuber. That's not my desire, right? That's why I have my production company, LLC, right? Uh, the whole reason I started this YouTube channel is just to take you all along my journey, transitioning from a full-time actor to like this other other producer, director, DP kind of thing that I am now, right? So that's just the reality of it. But this is extremely low, right? This is less than half of the amount of days that I would normally have on set. And this is all due to what really happened when the strike happened, when the writer strike happened first. And then when the actors joined, uh, and also keep in mind, I am a member of SAG. I've been a member of SAG for 13, 14 years, okay? So uh, I was kind of on the front line, like the in, the insider getting all the emails on this. Uh, last year, I was on the, the, the voting committee for, for, for the SAG awards, right? So people are asking me, they're saying, just Justin, why did the strike affect you, dude? You're you're not IATSE, you're non-union. I'm gonna tell you why it slowed everything down, even for non-union people. Because it, for writers or actors that are non-union and were hoping to join the union, the worst thing you can do is work during their strike, right? Because th they're not gonna be ignorant to looking at resumes when people join their unions and go, wait, wait, when did they do this work? They did this during our big strike, right? Like these strikes don't happen all the time, right? Like they, they're gonna be well aware when people are working when they probably shouldn't be working. And it's called scabbing. And that's the worst thing you can do, right? Because you're not showing solidarity. So why would they let you join their union if, if, if you were like not showing solidarity when they were on this big massive strike? Because the whole reason they go on these strikes is to protect their future members, okay? So this is why it affects everybody, right? Uh, and of course, me being SAG, you know, I was getting these emails and it was a little confusing. The emails that SAG was sending out, and keep in mind, I get daily emails during these strikes, it was a little confusing even from the actor side of things where they're saying, uh, no one should be auditioning. But then they send a, an email the next day saying, oh, but it's okay to do commercials, but you shouldn't be auditioning. Right, do you see like this, it's a slippery slope, right? It's this weird thing. What it did, it scared a lot of people to where the work just stopped, even in the corporate world. I, I have two different corporate clients, right? I have bigger corporate clients where I'm the gaffer for, that show up with my van package and a grip. And then I have these other corporate clients that I've been with since my GH5 days, we're going way back to like 2018, right? That's my corporate client where I kind of operate as a producer, director, and the cinematographer, right? And I go, I show up, we shoot B-roll, we shoot talking heads. I've shown those videos here in the past on YouTube, right? So we have those two different kinds of corporate jobs that I work. even those dried up. And I think it was really everyone didn't know what to do. And when you live in a town like Los Angeles, right, you, you got to be very aware of the optics. And I think that's why everything got squeezed so hard, specifically here in Los Angeles. But here's the reality of it, right? I worked less than half the days that I normally work. Yeah, I usually get anywhere from 60 to 80 days on set through a working year. And here you can kind of see where I break it down, right? These are all my tax jobs. And now here you'll see the cash payment jobs I did. And then also you see down here, I include my passion project. When you have an LLC like we have with Dog Times Productions, it's important to include the passion projects. We're obviously the ones paying people 
people, but that's why to keep track of them. You're paying people. No one, we're, no one's paying us to make these spec commercials. But the reality is, we're hiring cast, we're hiring crew, we're we're ordering catering, we're taking people to lunch. Right? These are all write offs. Right? Again, uh, something that is just easier to do with an LLC versus just an S corp. I'm a wheeler and a dealer because that's another way to ha make income as a freelancer, as you all know, I'm sure. Selling gear. Right? I sell gear like crazy. These were my large investments, so I keep things separate from my accountant. Right? Any gear that costs over five hundred dollars that goes on this large investment list right these are looked at as investments and not so much as expenses because they cost you over five hundred dollars right so you'll see here sony rx1 r mark ii i bought a leica 50 millimeter lens to go with my schneider xenons i did a video long ago where i tested the leica r the version ones with the xenons and for the most part they match pretty well so i knew if i got a leica r 50 mil version 2 i knew it would match uh, really nice. Uh, I'll just get that because it's only $500 versus a, uh, you know, $3,500 <laughs> Xenon, right? So I bought a flash unit for the RX-1 because I did a demonstration with that video, the high flash sync speed, one four thousand, one two thousandth flash sync speed. It's insane. Mention that in the review. I also bought a Leica R90 millimeter lens. Honestly, guys, I bought the Leica R90 really for portraits. There was a hot, hot minute where I was getting a little bit into doing portraits, but I quickly kind of abandoned it. Uh, I never pushed it. And a lot of it is because I don't want to do what these agents and casting directors want to see because I think it's it's not going in line with the images that I want to make. Every agency, uh, whether they're commercial or theatrical, they're all different, right? Because they all like their clients to look the same way, right? That's why most of them have their own. Like when I had a manager, when I was an actor here in LA and I had a manager here, he had his own in-house headshot guy that, you know, we went to because they like all their clients to have the exact same look. That's just how it is, right? So it's a very competitive thing here. I also bought a Leica M 90 mil. Why would I buy both? Well, I don't know. You guys know, if you follow the channel, I got really big into using the rangefinder, and I just, uh, the 90 mil is like this big. I think I'm gonna do a video next year where uh, I show like my miniature lens set. One, I love the rangefinder because it's like an instrument, right? You feel like you're, you're part of the image making process rather than just being an assistant to the machine taking the photo, right? But the other cool thing about the Leica rangefinder is how tiny the those lenses can be, and that, that's a big appeal to me as a traveler or uh, whatever. But then I also bought the 21 mil because I wanted to do more street with it. We did videos here. Uh, and then you'll see I bought some Titan tubes. I bought uh, three Titan tubes, and then I bought one Helios tube. So I do have a kit now where it's three Titans, two Helioses, and then I have three little one-footer Godox tubes. So I have this kind of weird hodgepodge eight kit tube set, but I bought it based upon being someone that has been gaffing for the past six years here in LA. I know the size tubes that I lean on. So it didn't really make sense to me to have like an eight set of Titan tubes, but also because that's like $8,000, right? It's just something that works better for my workflow. And now let's get into the small gear purchases. But before we start talking about the small gear purchases, for the first time ever, since the dawn of me doing this YouTube, I will finally now utter the um, shameful words, today's video is sponsored by. <laughs> But here's the thing. I am proud to say that the first official sponsor of the Dog Times channel is a company that I am super stoked on. One, because they're a small company. Two, they're from Sweden, which is awesome. And I think you know where we're going here. It's Cord Bag. Do you know what those are? Looks like from the uh, logo, it looks like it's from Cord Bag. <laughs> have you ever experienced uh, some Cord Bag products before? No, I have not. It's gonna be my first time. So this is gonna be quite an upgrade. Thanks. Your whole world's about to change, bro. Oh yeah, this is like heavy duty. This is something brand new oh, to the Cord Bag catalog. Okay. These are called Y-Wraps. Y-Wraps. Yeah, check that out, dude. You can wrap up your lenses, your dude. gear. Dude, oh yeah. Oh wow, that's dope, yeah. Yeah, check that out. See there? So Could even put a small monitor in there, like a five inch. Absolutely. Yeah, so you wrap it up and then it has the cinch it's cord that you wrap cinch. around and you can pop a label in there even. Wow, that's dope. Now check this out. This is kind of new too. The sling. The sling. So you can use this oh, with the sure. actual cord bag, you know, like when you're AC, mm -hmm. you can keep the cord bag like a small one right around your neck or something. Yeah. But I was thinking you could also use this like on your cameras and stuff too, or your focus polling system. Go on set in style, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, cord bag is just premium organizational products. I absolutely love their products. I've done a full video on their gear. Right now they're doing a special. They are giving away these lens patches. These are their newest ones. For the first time they're doing like actual focal lengths, which is rad. They're doing a deal 
on the patches. They're giving these away for free. You can get up to three patch kits for free, depending on the amount that you spend at cordbag.com. I'll have links down below, but here's the best part. Use the code DOGTIMES and you can get 15% off your entire purchase order. These are products that I use. As you can see, these are products I give to my team members. People say, oh, it costs too much, it costs too much. And I, I, I address all those things in the video because you know, you pay once, and you suffer never. <laughs> okay, let's get back into this. What are the small gear purchases that I made in 2023? We're gonna fly through this, right? Cause you'll see it's filters, an Art and Artisan's camera strap, a lot of accessories for the RX-1, some lens adapters, barn doors for the cream source, Vaxxus wireless antenna. So I got these new little baby nubs for the Vaxxus. I highly recommend that. Uh, if you're on an older system and you have those big long antenna, it's just gonna hit the easy rig. It gets in the way, it drives me crazy. I swapped it out for the baby nubs. Vaxxus is overseas. You're gonna have to wait a little bit to get those little baby antenna nubs, but man, is it a game changer. I love having those. It's just better ergonomically. Chemtech wipes, you gotta have the Chemtech wipes, right? Like that's just proper maintenance. I did a full video on that. If you don't know anything about Chemtech wipes, I'll put a link to that video, old video down below. So you can see there's a lot of stuff in here, a lot of photography stuff, right? This year, I th that's another reason I think why it was a little slow for me this year. Even though we started off with a bang in terms of like my corporate jobs, but I was also just like so obsessed with uh, street photography at the top of this year. I was really getting gung-ho into it. It's something that I started getting really big into fall last year. So, you know, going around to the top of this year, I was just so much enamored and just found myself engulfed in the world of street photography where I wasn't really pursuing the DP jobs. So I think that has a lot to do, and obviously you can tell by these small gear purchases, it's like, yeah, okay, we know. One big one here that you can see on here is the Tascam 10L DR Pro. I did a video on it, kind of a weird video, but um, I love that. I mainly bought it for, you know, not for these. I'm still using my sound devices and my Sennheiser. It's my very expensive setup for the YouTube studio, but for run and gun kind of stuff, I like the new Tascam DR 10L Pro because it's 32 bit float. It's got really good low cut filters. It's got some really nice limiters. It's got auto level. I, I, I like it. It. And that's why I invest in that, mainly just for the vlogging and stuff. The very ND filter, I mentioned that in my latest video that everyone uh, decided not to watch. <laughs> Uh, and that, that was my video on the TT Artisans 100mm f2.8. Awesome, awesome Nisi ND filter. You can get it in almost any filter size. I mean, they have one all the way. I'm gonna get the 95mm for my big Sony zoom lens, the Servo 28 to 135. I'm gonna get the, the it's an awesome, it's got hard stops. You have to go watch that video because I talked about it in that video. There's some other weird stuff in here. I bought a Scorpion Cam Caddy. I don't know, I just, I wanted, I've, I've had so many of those throughout my days as a skateboarder. I just wanted another one. So I bought one of those a while back. I did take it on a job that I was shooting BTS for. I I didn't include that with the gigs. That was one gig, that was a really random gig I did not too long ago where I just went and shot some BTS for a music video. I usually don't do stuff like that, but you know, it's been a hard year. I gotta include that on the thing. I just realized that. See, I, I'm really bad about not even including everything. Yeah, I went and bought some unbleached muzz at Joanne. That's the way to go, man. I got a wooden camera top plate for the FX30. You can see this is just a lot of random stuff. Apple AirTags, I bought more Apple AirTags after I got robbed. You see, it's just a lot of normal expendables too, you know, like alien tape, snot tape. If you know what snot tape is, that's to use on gel frames. Just a lot of, you know, sure tape. Yeah, Harbor Freight, always gotta do a little haul at Harbor Freight. Yeah, so those are the small gear uh, purchases. I keep track of all that stuff, why? Because those are called write-offs. We'll see what happens in 2024. Hopefully, hopefully it's uh, nothing but up, but you never know. You know, it's when you are a freelancer, certainly in, in this business, it's nothing but ups and downs. It's a roller coaster, you know? And, and I know, you know, being someone that's been doing this my entire adult life, I should know this by now, you know? We're talking about, Jesus, two decades of this shit, but it's just like, man, you, you just feel like, you know, can we ever get a win? But you usually don't, <laughs> like, that's the reality of it. Unless you like, one day you're Harrison Ford, you're doing your carpentry job and then you get you get hired and then it's like, you're on Star Wars, right? So it's like, well, yeah, that's the reality of it, you know? Like, you're just, you're just kind of existing on the roller coaster until one day, someone grabs your hand and pulls you off and then, oh my God, I'm the Rocketeer, woohoo! But you know, the reality is that, that doesn't happen for that many people. So it'll just be a never ending roller coaster until the day you get in the ground. <laughs> you know, that, that's a very, oh boy, that's not a good way to end the year, is it? But that's the reality of it. You know, um, that's why you have to start thinking outside of the m picture making business, right? That's why I love looking at people like Jason Lee, right? Jay, I love Jason Lee, one, because yeah, I grew up skateboarding. I knew him as a skateboarder way before I knew him as an actor, way before I knew him as a photographer, but he just opened a shop right down the street here in my neighborhood, right? He opened up his own little camera shop. So shout out to Eagle Rock Camera. Like 
That's things you have to start thinking about. Start thinking of smart places to invest your money that are not in this community, that are not in this business. Or, or if you want to get really smart about it, uh, something that would benefit you from this business, right? That's one that's one avenue where like we're like, let's see where this production idea takes us, right? Like like I want to have like a good retirement plan, right? And as someone that's an LLC, as an S as a freelancer, you gotta really think about that. What is your retirement plan? Because Uncle Sam ain't gonna give you shit, right? Okay, that's it. I think we uh I think uh, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> You're, you're never going to get back into where 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 you belong because the algorithm is is not controlled by human beings with real brains and emotions and passions. It's controlled by fucking computers. Yeah, it's dude, cool it's though, just, right? So just quickly like, like bring my hands down. Yeah. Dude, it looks fucking yeah, sick though. It does look sick. It's great. Yeah, this it's is really gonna. Fucking good. I told you when I saw yours, I go, yeah, we're gonna do something a little different, brother. <laughs>